Hi friends! In today's video, I thought it would be fun to try to make 5 meals for $5. My only objective in this video is to make 5 meals that I enjoy eating. I'll use whatever pantry staples I want, including any condiments I want to use like hot sauce, etc. In this video, I'll be feeding myself, but I did discover a great meal idea that I'll feed a family of 4 for about $3. Here is my grocery haul. This Chinese eggplant was on sale, so I picked this up and it was only 49 cents. I specifically wanted a banana for something I've been wanting to make, but I was surprised when it was 51 cents. It's a large banana, but still, that's a large part of my budget. I picked up a shallot that was 7 cents, but I had to take it out of my ingredients because I ended up being 7 cents over budget. I had forgot to add in the squash, and then when I added it in, I was over budget, so just ignore the shallot. I picked up garlic because there's something that I've been wanting to try and garlic powder just won't work for this recipe. I needed something acidic so I picked up a tomatillo that was 9 cents and then I also picked up the tomato for 28 cents. The Mexican squash was also on sale for 99 cents a pound so I grabbed one of those. Anyway, you guys know the drill. I basically just shopped produce that was on sale and I got the small bag of macaroni and I'm using one pound of brown rice and I'm taking it from my own pantry because it would be silly for me to buy more of this right now. And I measured it out to make sure it was exactly a pound. And I was happy to see that eggs have come way down in price. I was able to get six for $1.17 at my local Walmart. First thing I'm going to do is cook all of this rice. And I'll be washing my rice before I cook it. But if you prefer to not, then you definitely just should do whatever you want to do. I always plan my recipes around whatever's on sale, and since eggplant was on sale this week, I found a recipe in the New York Times for sweet and sour eggplant that was highly rated. It had 943 five-star ratings, so I thought it was definitely worth giving it a shot. The reason I bought the garlic was for this recipe. Ingredients called for rice vinegar and some soy sauce. I thought I was going to try this tamari, but then I realized how much sodium is in it, so I swapped it out for some low-sodium kikkoman soy sauce. I should have purchased a reduced sodium tamari, but I've been having an off week this week, and let's just say this is not the first mistake I've made this week. If you've never heard of tamari, it's a Japanese soy sauce, it's gluten-free, and it has a strong umami flavor. I had never tried it before, so I was really looking forward to it, but then I just conveniently forgot that I'm trying to eat lower sodium. Anyway, I'm going to cut up these eggplants into bite-sized pieces and I'm only using a portion for this dish since I'm just making enough to feed myself. The first step is to fry some garlic chips in oil until they're crispy. We're going to use this as a flavor enhancer to top the sweet and sour eggplant with and also to flavor the oil that we fry the eggplant in. If you're one of my viewers that can't eat garlic due to a dietary restriction, I would go ahead and throw in half cloves and let them season the oil, and then that way they're easier to pull out. Unless, of course, you don't eat garlic because you hate the taste of it. If that's the case, then I would just go ahead and add some sesame oil at the end to help flavor the dish. Once these start turning brown, I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. And then after we're finished with this, we're just going to go ahead and fry the eggplant until it's golden brown on the sides. The recipe has you salting the garlic chips. Those are going to be delicious on top of the eggplant. I'm going to add in one tablespoon of brown sugar along with one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. Once I stir that in, I'll add in a half tablespoon of vinegar. This eggplant looks like it's candy to perfection. Actually, I know it is because I've already tasted this and it's really good. However, they did shrink up a bit and I think I might be wishing I had more of this. I'll add a few drops of sesame oil to my rice and then top with the eggplant. 
The original recipe calls for both fresh cilantro and basil, but of course that wasn't in the budget. I did, however, have a few pieces of cilantro on hand that I just garnished it with because it really did need the extra color on the plate. And then I'm gonna top it with those crispy and salty garlic chips. And I think that's really gonna set this dish off. I'm gonna give this a nine on my rating scale. The flavor is delicious, it's sweet and it's sour, and the garlic really sets everything off. It's a nice bonus, but this would be tasty even without the garlic chips. This would be great with some diced chicken or diced pork or some tofu. I would definitely make this again. I have lots of brown rice and nothing makes me happier than having a bunch of this in the fridge. It makes mealtime so easy. My oldest son informed me that he recently broke the George Foreman grill, so I wanted to check it out because I really need to use this for my next meal. I think one of the reasons it got broke is because we don't have enough space in my house to store everything properly. In the coming month, I think I'm going to go to Ikea and buy another storage cabinet and try to organize my storage better. Anyway, I'll try that for this recipe and I'll see if it works. I'm in the mood for a breakfast bowl. It appears that my George Foreman is still working. It just has a little hole in the top, but it's still gonna work fine. And for the rice, I just heated that up and topped it with a few drops of sesame oil. For my egg, I fried that until the edges were cr a crispy brown chewy texture, which is exactly how I like my fried egg. I shredded the carrot and left it raw, and then I'm adding a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper to the egg, and then I'll dip in. And I cooked this perfect to my liking. This is exactly how I wanted it to be on the inside. I'm also eating this with a little bit of the chili garlic sauce. This is hitting my taste buds at a 10 right now. I've been eating a lot of scrambled eggs lately, so this fried egg is tasting especially good. And this is definitely my favorite way to cook zucchini. I love this combination and I love raw shredded carrots in my bowls. I think they're one of my favorite ingredients. Which reminds me, this would be an inexpensive meal for families. You would probably need two carrots and either one large zucchini or two squash. But you could get everything for around $3.17 and you still have the brown rice left over. For my next meal, I'm making a crock pot meal. And I'm showing these in this video a little bit out of order. I actually put this in the crock pot in the morning and then I made my breakfast. That's why you're still seeing a full zucchini here. Recently, one of my viewers told me about how in summer, when she has a lot of zucchini, she puts it in the crock pot along with a little water and bouillon and makes a kind of sauce out of it. Anyway, I've been thinking about that comment for a while now and thinking of how delicious that sounded. So I thought I would make something similar with my ingredients here. I'll just be using a, a small amount of the zucchini, a portion of the eggplant, and then I thought for some acidity, I could throw in the tomatillo. And I'm using this huge crock pot for just a single serving that I want to make, but it'll work fine. I thought this would make a nice meal with a pasta added in, and I don't think I got a shot of it, but I did put in a small amount of vegetable bouillon. I'm gonna add my pasta to the crock pot to cook. I feel like this might be a bad idea. However, there are some people that say you can cook pasta in a crock pot, and since I've never tried it, I thought I should do it at least once. I'm also gonna add some butter just to give it some extra richness, as well as a generous amount of pepper and this did need a little bit more salt added. Mm -hmm. 
I watched the pasta like a hawk until it was finished cooking. I tried one of the cooked tomatillos and it was delicious. I really want to start using those more in my soups, especially when they're on sale. I debated on whether to put a little bit of the tomato into that dish or not, but I decided that I would serve this with some diced tomatoes on top. This dish definitely needs more color, and I'm saving the rest of my carrot for another dish. This cooked zucchini has so much flavor. I think I've just discovered a new meal for myself and I love the eggplant in this. As far as the macaroni, I think there are some people that would be satisfied with this, but for me, I wouldn't cook my pasta in the crock pot again. I think in the future, I'll cook the pasta separately and then just top the pasta with the zucchini mixture. I'm looking forward to going back to the store and buying about three zucchinis and maybe two of the Chinese smaller eggplant, and then just make a big pot of this in the crock pot. This is delicious. I want to thank Sarah for mentioning to me her crock pot zucchini. I added some of the chili paste on top, and that made this even better. I think this would also be great with a can of stewed tomatoes instead of the tomatillos. It could be served over rice, or you could add potatoes to the mixture for another one pot dish. And I also like the idea of eating this with the low carb noodles. For my fourth dish, I'm just gonna make a regular eggplant stir fry and I've got some carrots to add in for this one. I'll be using my favorite sauce that consists of brown sugar, low sodium soy sauce, sesame oil, and garlic chili paste. I have a lot of the brown rice left over, so this dish just made sense. I'm going to make sure that my carrots remain kind of crispy because that's how I like them. And then I'll go ahead and add a little bit of the sauce just until it coats the vegetables. And I won't need all of the sauce, so I'll just use a portion of the remaining as a condiment. And then I'll put the rest of the sauce in the fridge for later. I garnish my plate with a few sesame seeds and some of the additional sauce on the side just in case I want to pour some over the rice. I'm also putting some sliced tomatoes on the side. I have added tomatoes to my stir fry before. It is unconventional but tasty but I also like fresh tomatoes so this works for me and this meal was definitely a 10 for me. I already knew it would be because that sauce is some of my favorite sauce and pretty much any vegetables that I added to uh, just tastes amazing. So this was a really good meal for me. It's interesting because from the dish that I ate earlier, the reason I gave it a nine was because it was just a little too sour for me. And I think that my taste buds really like this combination because that chili garlic does have vinegar in it, but it's not quite to the level of the sweet and sour if that makes sense. Anyway, I do still have a lot of rice left, so that makes me super happy. For my fifth and final meal, I'm making crepes. I have lots of eggs left and this full banana. I'll also be using a little bit of flour and brown sugar, and I think I'll also add in some vanilla. Usually you add in milk to the mix, but I didn't buy any in the haul, so I'm just gonna use half cup water and I'll whisk this until it's smooth. And I decided to add just a touch of sugar and a little salt. I'm planning to use this griddle I have, but it's too small to use this crepe tool the way it's intended to be used, but I do think I can make it work anyway. I'm planning to cook half the banana in the brown sugar and butter and then using the other half for fresh slices.
This meal is going to be so rich with all of that butter, but it's going to be really tasty. This is probably one of those meals that you would only want to eat on special occasions. Although there are plenty of ways that we can make this healthier. I have this cacao powder, so I thought why not add it into the batter? I have found so many uses for this. It's a lot of fun to have on hand. I had to add just a touch more sugar to balance out the powder because it can be a little bit bitter if you don't do that. And I was going to edit out this shot right here, but this ended up being my favorite crepe. See how thin it gets in places? It ended up being a little bit crispy around the edges, and I really liked that combination when I was eating it. And then on the next crepe, I ended up just using the back of a spoon, and honestly, it worked just as well. But I really did have fun playing with my crepe tool. I'm not really sure how I want to plate this. I do have some powdered sugar as well, but I'm thinking I'm just going to pour a little bit of the syrup on top and then just add some fresh bananas. And I did decide to add a little bit of the powdered sugar, but actually you're not really supposed to add that to a liquid because it just kind of dissolves in it. Anyway, as you can probably imagine, these were delicious. Very, very good. For my viewers that are eating lower sugar, you could always just cook some strawberries in a small amount of water and it'll form its own syrup and then you could use this as a filling for the crepes. I buy these frozen strawberries at Sam's Club and keep them in my freezer and they're naturally very sweet. One cup of the strawberries has 10 net carbs. This would be delicious with some whipped cream and some chopped walnuts. I actually prefer my food with a little less sugar, so this kind of crepe is right up my alley. I could eat this every day. I had a lot of ingredients left over, and I think I could have made two extra meals out of this. I could have used the eggs to make an egg drop soup, and I would have added the rice into that along with some chicken bouillon. I also could have made egg fried rice, and I could have roasted the tomatoes in my toaster oven to make those sweet and then eat those along with the macaroni. Let me know if you can think of something that I missed. Well, friends, that concludes another episode. I hope you enjoyed my five dinners for $5 video, and I did want to let you know that I'll be out of town on the day that this video is released, so I won't be able to respond to your comments in real time. However, I will be eager to read your comments when I return. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.